Today we're going to talk about motives. Why do you do what you do? In Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 18, Jesus talks about our motives on why we do the things that we do. In the middle of this context is the beautiful Lord's Prayer that we are all very well aware of. But I want to show you today how that fits in with a larger context of our motives in several different areas of our lives. So we're going to start reading in Matthew ch or chapter 6, verse 1 where he says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. That verse is what we call a controlling verse. That is the verse that sets the theme for all the rest of chapter 6, 1 through 18. And what he's saying is, when you do these, he calls them acts of righteousness, we'd call them spiritual disciplines. When you do those, you have to do them with a proper motive. You don't want to do it to be seen by men. That's not your motive. Your motive is to be connected to God. And he says, if you do your acts of righteousness or your spiritual disciplines with the wrong motives, you'll lose your reward that you have with the Father. So in other words, when I, when I do my spiritual disciplines, when I'm praying, when I am studying the Bible, when I'm giving, those kinds of things, motive matters. And when I'm doing those things with a good motive, I actually get some blessings or some benefits or what he calls here rewards from heaven. But when I do it with impure motives, specifically to be seen by other people so they'll think I'm amazing at being spiritual or whatever my motives are, that sacrifices or forfeits my rewards in heaven with God. So at the very end of the day, I'm going to tell you what the rewards are, but I'm going to take you through three examples that Jesus gives on, on acts of righteousness or spiritual disciplines and what, uh, what we would be forfeiting when we do it with wrong motives. So let's just pick it up now in verse 2. The first one is giving. He says, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. So there's that reward again. So he begins and says, listen, let's talk about giving. He says, here's what I need you to do. Don't give the way the hypocrites do. He's talking about the Pharisees. What the Pharisees like to do is they put the little giving box up at the front of the temple and they made a big show about coming down in front of everyone and, and giving and making sure they knew what they gave so that they could be seen by men. It was all about the show because they wanted other people to see how wealthy they were and how holy they were and how spiritual they were based on how much money they gave. So Jesus says, what I want you to do with giving is exactly the opposite of that. Don't be like your religious leaders. You don't give for a show. You don't give so other people will know how much you give. You don't give so that other people will think you're generous or think you're holy or think you're a great Christian. That's not why you give. That's not what this is about. He said you give with a pure motive. You give with a need. You give because you see a need and you want to meet that need. You give because the Holy Spirit pricks your heart to be generous, and you're generous because God wants you to be generous. You're doing it for God. You're doing it for the kingdom of God. You're doing it for the needs presented. That's your motives. In fact, he says something here uh, interesting. He says, don't even let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And that's a very interesting phrase that when you, when you do the research, you find out that he's actually talking about your motive is also not to be impressed with yourself. Don't even let your left hand know what your right hand's doing because it's so easy when it comes to giving money to become prideful and impressed with yourself. And your motive to give is not to impress other people. It's also not to impress yourself. Don't sit back and go, wow, look how generous I am. Wow, I'm doing a great job being generous. He said, those are all impure motives. And if you do that, you lose your reward with God. You give for one motive, one purpose. God wants you to give. There's a legitimate need. You want to meet that need because you love God and you want to push forward the kingdom of God. That's the only reason you give. So he says giving is important. He, he didn't say if you give. He says when you give. 
He says, giving is important. I expect you to give. Jesus couldn't imagine a disciple, a follower of his that wouldn't be generous and give his money. He says, that, that, that's not even the conversation here. The conversation here isn't, are you going to give or not? You're going to give. The issue is, let your motive be pure when you give. That's what you'd want to do. Do not give with impure motives. Give only because there's a legitimate need. You love Jesus. You want to push forward that need and take care of that need. Don't do it to be seen by men, and certainly don't be impressed with yourself when you do it. So that's number one. Number two is prayer. And once again, as he said, and when you give, he also says, and when you pray. So Jesus can't imagine a disciple that wouldn't give. He also can't imagine a disciple that wouldn't pray. So he says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, the Pharisees, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. See, it's back to this whole reward thing. They've received their reward because they want to pray out loud and they want to pray these, these big fancy prayers so other people will see them and go, oh, wow, they pray so well. They must be holy men of God because look at how well they pray. He says, your motive for prayer is not to be seen by men so other people will think you're holy and righteous and a good prayer. He says, when you pray, you go into your room, you close the door, and you pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's where you get your reward. You get your reward from God from spending time alone with Him. Now, listen, He's not being literal here that you can only pray in a closet. And He's not being literal here that you can only pray when you're by yourself. You can pray with other people. You can pray out loud. You can pray over your meal in a restaurant. You can pray in a small group. We pray publicly in assemblies. That's not what He's talking about. He's talking about the motive. You don't pray to be seen by men. You don't pray so that other people will be impressed with how you pray. You don't pray using big words and fancy words. That's not what you do. That's not what it's about. It's about what? Your heart connecting to the Father. You being intimate with God. That's all it is about. So he says, put other people aside and just focus on your own motive. And that is you want to connect with God and talk to the Father. God is your Father. You're His child. You want to talk to your dad. So talk to Him. But let that be your motive to connect with God, not to impress other people. And he continues on. He says, um, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. The pagans uh, were the people of the pagan religions, and, and they believed the same way they do today, by the way, that the more you prayed, the more the gods would hear you. So think about the Hindu religion. Uh, or you may have, have, have noticed in the Muslim religion, they do the same thing. They'll start to pray and they'll just babble. And they'll babble over and over again. And they'll, they'll talk, pray for long periods of time. Because they're believing that the more they pray, the more the gods have to do what they're asking the gods to do. And so they'll have the prayer flags. And as long as the prayer flags are waving, they're praying. And they have prayer wheels. And as long as the wheels are turning, they're praying. Because if they can do 24-7, then the gods will hear their prayers and have to, have to do what they're asking because they're praying so much. It is a system, it's a legalistic system based on a transaction. The more I pray, the more gods are going to do for me. Okay? Jesus says, that's not what prayer is about. He said, your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. It's not about the length of your prayer. It's about connecting with God. God already knows what you need. You don't pray to tell God what you need. That's the most immature kind of prayer you can have. You, you don't go to Father and say, okay, God, here's all the things I need, and if I do this long enough and repeat it long enough, then you've got to answer me. That's not what prayer is. Prayer is about being simple. And it's about a pure heart. It's about coming before your Father, the Creator of the universe. Your Father is the King of the universe. And you want to spend time with Him and share with Him your heart and tell Him how much you love Him and connect with Him. Prayer is more about God changing your heart than you changing God's mind. And you have to understand that about prayer. That's what prayer is. I've found that I've matured. Prayer is a whole lot more about 51-minute prayers 
than one 50-minute prayer. Prayer is an attitude of everything I'm doing throughout the day. It's an ongoing conversation with the Father, telling Him things and asking Him questions and com communicating with Him. It's not about me sitting down for an hour in the morning and saying everything I can think of so I can walk away and go, well, I pray an hour every day. Well, except when I'm real busy, then I pray two hours. That's a motive thing again. It's not about being seen by men and having fancy words and praying for a long time so I can tell people I have a 30-minute quiet time or an hour quiet time. It's about connecting with God. It's about being close to God. It's about this ongoing, everyday, all-day-long conversation with God where I lay in bed and the first thing I do when I wake up is I just say, Good morning, Lord. Make me an instrument for you today. Just, just take care of me today and work with me today and, and help me to represent you well today. And then I get up out of bed and I, I start my day and, and there's a prayer here and a prayer there. And it's just, it's just these prayers over and over again, all throughout the day. It's this constant communication with the Father. It's not fancy and it's not big words and it's not a long mile in the log and it's not asking Him to do a lot of things for me. Jesus says, that's not what it's all about. He said, prayer is about connecting with the Father. He said, let me give you an example. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen most powerful prayer in Scripture. 20 seconds maybe, 30 seconds maybe. He said it's not about the time you're praying. It's not about how big and fancy your words are. It's not getting your theology right. It's not learning how to pray right or wrong. It's just your heart connected to Father's. And if your heart's right, you can't pray wrong. And if your heart's impure and your motives are impure, your prayers are gonna lose all their power. You're gonna lose the reward. So watch your motive in prayer. And then finally, he says, watch your motive in fasting. He says, when you fast, once again, are you ready for this? He doesn't say if you fast, when you fast. And let me just say this. For hundreds of years, fasting has been a part of the Christian community. It's, it's a part of denying your flesh so that you can concentrate on your spirit. You're praying to God, you're feeding on His Spirit but you're more attuned to feeding on the Spirit because you're denying your flesh. It's been a regular pattern throughout the ages until recently. And in, in the last hundred years, for some reason in America, we've lost this discipline. We need to get this discipline back. Remember, he says when you fast, not if. You need to add this discipline, this work of righteousness, this act of righteousness. You need to, you need to add that to your arsenal of tools in your spiritual disciplines to walk on your uh, to work on your walk with God to in increase your intimacy with God so learn how to deny your flesh take a meal uh, take lunch skip lunch and when you skip lunch today just spend some time with God just talk to him and read a scripture and tell him tell him what's going on in your life it has been amazing how, how fasting through the centuries has been used for two primary purposes. One, for a huge decision coming up. So for example, in the New Testament in Acts, before they would put in elders, they would fast. Before they would call pastors, they would fast. Those are big decisions. If you have a big decision coming up about a job or, 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 or some other big issue, maybe you need to fast and seek God's will on that. Second is sometimes when you get stuck in a sin and you can't get out of that sin, you fast and pray for the Holy Spirit to break that sin. I remember there was one instance in the Gospels where the disciples could not cast out a demon. And so they asked Jesus, you know, we can't do this. And Jesus was able to do it. They said, why couldn't we do it? And He said, this one only comes out by prayer and fasting. There's sometimes you get caught in a sin. The only way to release the power of that sin is through fasting. Fasting has huge both physical and spiritual benefits. So we need to add that to our arsenal. But he says, when you do it, don't do it like the hypocrites do. Once again, the Pharisees. For they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. 
I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So it's the same exact motive again. These Pharisees, uh, they would fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now that was market days. Uh, in in uh, those days. And what, what that meant was, if you're a fisherman, you fish on Sunday, Monday, you go to market. You fish on Wednesday, you go to market. Then you fish on Friday, and then you take Saturday off because it's the Sabbath. Your market days are Tuesday, Thursday. That's where you sell your wares. Well, that's when the Pharisees would call fasting days, and they would stand on the street corners wailing about how hungry they were and praying to God for everyone to hear so that everyone would be impressed with their faithfulness and their righteousness. God, Jesus says, don't do that. Don't do that. It does you no good. You lose all the rewards of fasting when you do that. Don't, go, don't call a lunch and go to lunch with a buddy and then let him order lunch and you say, oh, I'm fasting, I can't eat today. You lose your reward. You, you've missed the point. The point is you're denying your flesh so that you can fill your spirit. So if you're fasting for a lunch or if you're fasting for a day, you take those times you would be eating and you spend those with the Lord, not with somebody else to tell them that you're fasting. He said you lose your reward. He says, look, why you do something is as important as what you do it in the kingdom of God. These things called acts of righteousness, these disciplines like giving, he expects it, praying, he expects it, fasting, he expects it, but he expects it with a pure motive. And the motive is to be with God. And the blessing, the reward, he talked about losing your reward if you do it with impure motives and gaining your reward if you do it with good motives. What's the reward? The reward is intimacy with God. The reward is this connectedness with God, this ongoing powerful relationship with God where you get closer and closer and closer to God. But you're not going to get close to God if your motives are impure for doing the disciplines and you're just doing it to be seen by men. So he says, listen to me. God says, I want to be as close to you as I possibly can. I'm the creator and I'm inviting you into this relationship with me. You can get as close as you want to get. But here's what I need. I need you in the disciplines, giving, reading, praying, fasting, and I need you doing it with pure motives. And if you do that, there's no limit to how close you can get with me. But if you do it with impure motives, you're going to lose the closeness and the intimacy that you could get from God. And so Jesus says, listen, I want to be close to you, but you've got to take the time to be in the disciplines, and you've got to watch your motive and do it for the right reasons. And if you do, you will be blessed with this close, intimate walk with God that is greater, that is grander than anything you could ever imagine. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this teaching out of Matthew chapter 6. And Lord, I pray for our motives as people that we pray with a pure heart, that we fast with a pure heart, that we give with a pure heart, that we, we learn the Word with a pure heart, not to impress other people by quoting scripture or saying fancy prayers or fasting and announcing it or giving large sums of money, Lord. But just because we're, we're with you and that's what you've asked us to do and we're just walking in obedience before you. And Lord, as we do it with pure motives and we walk in obedience, reward us with nothing other than your presence. Lord, there's not a greater reward in this world than you. You are the reward. And so, Lord, give us our reward. Give us our reward. In Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for taking the time uh, to watch this video today. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.